One of my favorite things to do on the weekend is actually head over to the flea market. So a lot of people think that flea markets are for antiques or collectibles, but actually I find a lot of my tools there. I've bought framing guns, hammers, even fasteners. So it's a great place to go and collect those things that I can save some money on. Another great thing you can find at the flea market is old building materials. You can clean them up and give them a new life in your home. And this homeowner who wrote in intends to do just that. Hey, Nathan, good to see you. Hey, Greg, is this the beam you wrote me about? Yes, it is. Oh, that's great. Where'd you pick it up from? So I picked up the Brimfield Fair a little while ago. Mm -hmm. and, uh, How much you pay for it? I paid $40 for it. Oh, that's a great deal. You could have paid a couple hundred bucks for something like this at a really? shop. Yeah, that's why I love the flea markets. You really can't get the best deal there. So any history come with it? Uh, so the guy I bought it from said he um, got it from a barn up in Vermont that they were salvaging. Oh, very cool. Yeah, you can tell it's very old. It's got the hand-hewed front. You know, they cleaned it up with, uh, with the ax and it's even got a nice check down the front. It's got a lot of character to it. What do you plan on doing with it? Um, so my thought is I want to make it into a new mantle above my fireplace. Nice. Um, so I started cleaning it up mm -hmm. and um, getting it looking good and that's kind of where I got stuck on figuring out how I need to mount it. Do you have anything up already? I do, I have one I can go show you. All right, let's take a look. All right, so this is the mantle you want to swap out, right? Yes, it is. Okay, so at first glance I can notice it's pitching off a little bit and looks like it's hung light duty, just a couple of plastic shields. So I think we can really stiffen this up with that new beam, it's gonna look sharp. Great, yeah, definitely add a lot more character to the room too. Definitely, let's uh, drop this one off, we'll grab some measurements and cut the beam. Sounds good. Okay. All right, you're free. Great, looks good already. <laughs> All right, so the first thing we want to do is place the beam. We want to be far enough away from the firebox, and we also want to be centered in the chimney. What we're going to do is we're going to drill some holes, and we're going to put some threaded rod into it. But we don't want to go through the center of the brick because most likely these are cord bricks, meaning there's little holes inside. We'd be better off, and it'll be stronger to go through the mortar bed. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is drill three holes onto the fireplace. I'm going to drill three holes onto the back of the beam, and then we'll slide it right on. Sounds good. All right, so I want to be centered in the fireplace, so I'm going to use the bricks to help find my center. I've got a joint right in the middle. That's a good place to start. And then off that, 16 and 3 quarter this way. And 16 and 3 quarter this way. Now we just want to make sure it's level. I'm going to drill quarter inch pilot holes to make it easier to drill in with the larger bit. Greg, why don't you follow me in with the HEPA vac to keep the dust down. I want the epoxy to bond really well with the mortar, so I'm going to try and clean out all the fine dust particles. I like epoxy in this application because it's really good at bonding different materials. We have the steel going to masonry, and also it's got a really good tensile strength on it. All right, so now we want to make sure that these are projecting out a little bit higher than level and then lower level across. Okay. So I'll bring this up close and then you put the level on. Yeah, that's good. All right, now that we have our threaded rod inserted, we can give that epoxy some time to cure. In the meantime, we can cut our beam to length. It's pretty long, so we're gonna wanna cut it down. We might as well use the width of the fireplace, 58 and a half inches, It'll look pretty clean. We could use a circular saw to cut this, it would be pretty quick, but I thought it'd be pretty cool to actually use a two-person cross-cut saw. Like oh, wow. This. Got this from my grandfather's house, and uh, it might take us a little longer, but 
The beam has a lot of character, you know, the hand hue, the check, that end's a little bit rougher. Maybe kind of cool to give the same detail on the other end. Are you down for that? Sounds great. All right, let's give it a try. All right, nice start, nice and slow. Give it a little score. Awesome, well that was easy. <laughs> I like how it matches the other end, like how they would have done it years ago. So this is the backside, we're gonna do our layout, but I noticed that this check mark has kind of formed a little bit of a ridge. Nothing too bad, but I'd like to take it down with my block plane before we bring it inside and hang it up. That way when we put it up against the wall, it doesn't roll or teeter at all. Okay. All right, so we pulled our dimensions from right to left. First hole is 13, second hole 29, three quarter. And last hole is 46 and 5 eighths. All right, so we got our holes drilled. It looks good, we did a dry fit. Now it's time for some finish. Um, back in the day, a lot of people used tongue oil. It's great, adds a nice natural finish, uh, brings out the good wood tones in it. Oh wow, yeah, I can already see a difference. Yeah, that's a good look. Now how many coats do we need to apply? Well, we're gonna do one coat to start. We're gonna let it set for about 15 minutes and then we'll strike it off with a lint-free rag. And then if you want to, and after 24 hours, you're gonna apply a second coat. Okay, and repeat the same process, wipe it off. Yep, what do you think? Wow, that looks really good. You all can right. definitely see all the nice character and the different tones in the wood. Great, it's had some time to soak in, just strike it off and uh, aim for these high, high glossy spots, especially the knots, they don't really soak in the tongue oil as much, but just hit it evenly. Okay, what we'll do. All right, we're all set. We've got the tongue oil on it. The dry fit looks good. So all we need to do now is fill up the back voids with some fast curing epoxy. We'll bring it in and hang it up. Okay. All right, right we've got them filled up about three quarters of the way. Okay. Plenty of room for the rod to go in. So we're, we're done. We can bring it inside and hang it up. Wonderful. All right, let's do it. All right. So threaded rod is nice and hard, yep. bring it up. All right, nice and slow. Nice, good fit. You like it? I do, yeah, this looks amazing, Nathan. Awesome, one more coat of tongue oil and it'll be good for a while. Glad you like it. Yeah, no, cut perfect of size, nice and level. Thank cool. you so much. You're welcome. Yep, that looks awesome. Beautiful bean, really <laughs> and cool. Nice to have the uh, crosscut saw in your repertoire. Yeah, we, I've been gifted a lot of tools over the years and actually brought a few of them with me today to show you. Um, here's some of the tools guys would have been using back in the day to quickly square lumber or make sizable lumber, you know, build a house with. Yeah, let's be honest, nothing quick about it, right? No, no, a no. A lot of work. Very time consuming. Here we have a draw knife. A lot of guys would have been pulling bark off, letting the beams dry, letting the logs dry. Here's an ax with a single bevel, good for cleaning up the edge of a log. Uh, of course, a two-man cross-cut saw, a small adds, and here I have a larger adds, which yep. this is a great tool to have. People still like to use them. It's a quick, efficient way to square lumber. You can make a flat side. I actually brought a log with me if you want to see how yeah, it works. I would love to see this thing in operation. So you brought us, what is this wood? I brought some red cedar. Okay. So with this, you really want to be safe because you're swinging an ax blade towards yourself. So you're just going to do short, choppy strokes. And the whole goal is just take little pieces out. Clearly effective in cleaning it up, um, but also if you could stop for a second, yeah. you, know, you can see where those sort of telltale signs come from when you find those hand-hewn logs. Yeah, you can see those big nicks. So we're starting to pull out big flakes here. I might even have to reverse and come to it on the other way to pull off some of these. Well, Nathan, it really makes you appreciate how much effort goes into that whole thing. It does. It's exhausting. And the thing I'm thinking is that uh, Greg really had a deal buying his for 40 bucks yeah. already hewn. Yeah, he did. Great deal. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching. 
This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.